Hi. Hello. Welcome We're to another edition of uh, karaoke, carpool karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, we do have a guitar back here. That's this right. Week. That's right. <laughs> uh, here, this, this should Christmas be the still shot. <laughs> <a> Christmas song. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever it is. Merry Christmas, go to hell. Whatever it is, I'll butcher it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a special guest today. <laughs> Tim Bradstreet, and uh, I love that we have a special guest for a movie like this. Why not? I mean, what the heck? It's Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And that's how our show is. It's not uh, Star Wars or Doctor Strange or anything like that. That would make sense. that guy. <laughs> it would make sense for Tim to be here to review for like a special no, no. edition thing. Why him? <laughs> the movie with the extended sequence on it, it using did. a bidet. It did need me, actually. Uh, <laughs> because I can talk about, um, I can talk about uh, Caitlin. Who 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 used to go out with James Franco? And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I used to know exactly like this. <laughs> I know this gal. Probably, probably. <laughs> I used to know this gal, Caitlin. She was great. She's an actress, and uh, she used to go out with James for a long time. And then she went out with my buddy Thomas Jane, and she's so cool. But when I found out her dad was Romero mm -hmm. and escaped from New York, I literally wouldn't leave her alone for months. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was cool though. It was really cool. She's a, she's a great chick. <laughs> That's. I always have trouble explaining what I do whenever I've met, like, somebody's parents. I mean, granted, it it was never anything like in this fucking movie. There weren't moose balls that came with her, but it was always hard explaining what I do without sounding like I'm an internet pornographer. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, I think, had they had a bit of a smell there, mm -hmm. and we could actually smell the moose. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it it would have it, it would have been I, I mean like Will Wheaton's barf fest and it uh, would have been yeah. Stand by Me. <laughs> well, because it was soaking in its own urine. It's, was it's just so foul. And then there's this one camera shot where you see the moose mm -hmm. at an angle where you also see the bottom of the cage, yeah. and there's all this like kind of gross, just kind of like sediment on the bottom, like in piles, and it's just the toilet like, I don't scene know too. What that is. Brian Cranston farting on a toilet. Brian Cranston on the toilet, man. That that, that, that actually, will go down in history. I actually, think. I did kind of like that scene. And you know what? No one really looks. I, you, you never expect it, but Brian Cranston looked really good on the toilet. I thought yeah. he looked. He's toned well, up. I mean, we've used to, we've been used to seeing his uh, legs and tidy whities. That's, right. that's, <laughs> right. that's true. That's no, true. I, th I think that scene with in most movies would have been. I would have hated it absolutely, but since it was Cranston. I, th I think I was just kind of like, okay, this is, it's Cranston doing this. The only so thing acceptable. that honestly keeps this movie from being one of the worst I've seen this year is the term, well, since it was Cranston. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, w w without Cranston, and James Franco. And James Franco, honestly, Without yeah. those two, this movie would have been horrendous. The cast really is one of the strong points of the yeah. film. No question. It's the only thing... I didn't... Honestly, I really didn't care that much for this movie. But I won't go so far as to say that I hated it. I, I won't go so far as to say I was having a miserable shitbag time sitting there watching it or anything like that. No, we've definitely had worse times watching it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I had an easier time sitting through this than I did, like, Daddy's Home from last Christmas. Oh, God! <laughs> Here's the thing. You're going to see... When this film comes out, uh -huh. I predict... There's going to be 15, 16 year old kids everywhere getting the Franco tats. <laughs> the Franco tats. Some of them are prison tats. They're kind of mm -hmm. not too well done, but mixed with very good tats, I think it makes for a legit tattoo person. Person with tattoos. In other words. The Happy Holidays card on the that's, tattooed on the back. That's you know that's just silly fun. Yeah. <laughs> you really, know, really, I thought it was ridiculous, right? He, it's like it's ridiculous, but then the Happy Holidays makes it more ridiculous somehow. It's like, it oh does. fuck! Well, I fucked that up. <laughs> that if this movie was smell o vision it would go right on. It, it would be a better use of that than the last thing I saw, which was of that, which was Spy Kids four, with the robot farts oh. and the uh, the. There was one part in that movie where a character is picking their nose or something like that, and then the little ding went off, and I'm sitting there like, really? Okay. I guess that's what the inside of her nose smells like. Yeah. Cardboard. Good times, yeah. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that keeps me in the seats, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I kind of, saved that card. It's that kind of attention to detail yeah. that I enjoy in a film, um, mm -hmm. but rarely get, actually. <laughs> That's why we had a, it's had a great time at this movie. I mean, what did you what did you guys think of this? <clears throat> what what would your, be your rating system? Would it be a five star or a? Typically, what we say is like uh, 
sometimes we'll say like, oh, this is worth uh, going out to the theater to see, or maybe this is worth a matinee or a Netflix or a rental or just skipping it entirely. I think I think dates would have a really good time with this movie because it's just you know uh -huh. there's nothing to feel depressed. I mean, no, it's, it's the kind of movie that just make make you walk out in a good mood. I think it's 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 endearing uh, to it's a, a degree. Yeah, and... It's a little childish, but it's... <laughs> a little. Well, that's, I mean, that's just the character. <laughs> this movie the has a scene well, okay, in which a moose, moose soaked falls, in yeah. urine, and that's that's the climax. This movie's big engagement has them being shit on by birds. I thought, um, <laughs> I thought it was the cameo at the end. Oh, the kiss cameo. Spoilers. Uh, that, oh, we spoilers. spoilers. We spoil we, everything. We spoil. Like, we saw two members of Kiss are in I this. thought, you know, and it's it's weird, too, because I saw Paul Stanley not too long ago in makeup, and he looked really good. He looked mm. really tired. He looked, mm. I mean, he, he was kind of droopy, yeah. which I hate to see. You know, you hate to see your icons Those facelifts are starting to melt. Yeah. That could be part of the yeah. problem, is these do. Yeah. I've met a few of them because they've been to conventions that we've done, and Kiss is uh, Nick Foster, who does some stuff, it's been in some movies on our site. Um, he, that's like his favorite band, so every time... I'm at a con. I get a picture of myself with it, with with them to send to Nick because that's my dream to, to meet all members of Kiss before Nick gets a chance. The time I the time I met Gene, he came. He was at my table at, mm -hmm. at San Diego Comic Con, and he said uh, something like, "You're you're the Punisher artist." And I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, "Fuck, it's Gene Simmons." <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? I was a crazy Kiss fan. Yeah. So I, I asked him if I could have a picture with him. He said, "Sure." And we took a picture, and he goes, 10 bucks. Nice. And he was serious. Yeah. I thought he was kidding. He was serious. And so I gave him his 10 bucks. <laughs> I mean, like, I would have said, picture. Fuck you. I would have said, keep it, you know, or no, it wasn't. It was my friend that shot the picture. So he probably wasn't serious, but, you know, out of deference to Gene, you know. <laughs> well, and Gene's always looking for that 10 bucks. Always. Gene, Gene yeah. that's why he's one of the richest men in yeah. what he does. Crazy. He's one of the only ones of the band that I haven't met. <laughs> really? Haven't met? Haven't no, Gene? no, I, uh, Peter Chris, uh, I don't know as much about him as Nick does, or that you guys would, but one of the guys who was with him in the 80s, uh... Not one of the original members. Vinnie no. Vincent? What? Vinnie Vincent? Yeah, I think that was he it. He would have been the replacement for Ace. Yeah. The first one. That, I, I think that was it. It was a con in, uh, it, that was Days of the Dead in Chicago, I think. Wow. <clears throat> That's going back. And Vinny, remember Vinny's kiss makeup? He had the onk. Yeah, yeah. Kind of oh, look. Okay. And he was really kind of creepy looking. Yeah. Don't, since I don't listen to him a lot, the most I know is the, is the movie Kiss Meets Phantom of the Park. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. Oh, movie. yeah. When I was, I think, was that 1978? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I was 11, and I was crazy for Kiss. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? And when that, when that came on, we were like glued to the set. We yeah. could not believe a kiss was on TV. Holy crap! Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> but obviously that movie does not hold up for anyone <laughs> older than twelve, really. Well, but that's it, also one of the it, charms about it. You Ace Freely dubbed in that movie too. One of them is. Thinks he, yeah, I think yeah. one of yeah. them is uh, has a stunt double that's obviously a black man at one point. Well, I heard that that like Ace was really like drugged out like just yeah. I mean he was a big pain around that time and, mm. and uh, didn't show up didn't know his lines didn't do anything he just uh -huh. would just be plowed you know <laughs> just hired and I couldn't even tell you how many kites well rock and roll money you can get pretty high higher than giraffe pussy <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, my uh, my I think my first thought when I saw that movie, Kiss Me's Fan of the Park, was this is the same theme park from National Lampoon's Vacation. <laughs> I want to think they're Walk both in the same Wally universe. Worlds. Now, see, yeah. I I had that thought at first, but uh -huh. just because of like I don't know, it was like one of the shots, and I went, yeah. it reminded me of it. Was oh, it it's really not. The park? It, oh, yeah, it is. It's like the same the same park. I, I, I forget which one it is. It's one Sorry, of them folks. It's one of them. Parks that Zach, it's Parks goes. The moves out front should have told you. It's it's one of the parks that Zach Lavoy worked at for a while. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was a couple of like the exterior shots of the roller coasters, where I was like, oh, I know that one. That's the second giant roller coaster the Griswolds uh, went on. <laughs> was it Kings Island? No, it no. wasn't. Uh, it was. Uh, they have the racers. Crap, they, that's I been can't... in a movie. I can't remember which one it was though. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. What was the movie in roller? What was the a park in roller coaster? 
fuck. Um, Do I have I to call know. Timothy Bottoms? I, yes. <laughs> see, George Siegel awake yet? <laughs> I will talk about we'll that. That's my bush for hours. <laughs> what? You, your, your bush? What? Remember, that's my bush, Timothy Bottoms, yes. where he was George W. Bush on yes. the on that sitcom? That that's is right. I enjoyed that. I liked that show. <laughs> All six Timothy episodes Bottoms. of it. Um, now, this, this is the kind of movie where you pretty much... It's if exactly you see the what trailer, you, you, you know what you're in for with this. It, it, it's the kind of movie that I think they do about once a year. Yeah, it's um, it's it's um, I Follow it the was, Bride. Yeah, yeah. It's all those movies. Dave and I were talking like we've seen this movie a hundred times. We uh -huh. all have seen this movie a hundred times. But it's and, and oh, this is only my opinion. Um, it was uh, somehow James Franco's just endearing. It's like even as a guy, I can't hate the guy. You know, <laughs> it's like. Usually you're like, oh, that guy's a fag, man. No, he, James is just kind of fun. And then yeah. those people came in late in the theater, and I go, I said something like, uh, hey, Seth Rogen isn't in this one. It was look like a crowd that was like, why oh. are they here? <laughs> uh -huh. this, 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 they should be here for like... Whatever the next Seth Rogen movie is. Well, we like, snuck in a bunch of candy to go meat. see this, so we looked like we oh, just got blitzed in the dude, car and then decided to go. None full. of us ate dinner, so we were <laughs> we were crammed. I had my. I mean, I've lost a bunch of weight. I, I looked like my old self walking in there, so it didn't fool. I mean, nobody's nobody was <laughs> all they were but in puffy there. in weird spots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was better than I expected. I didn't think it was a bad movie. It, I it didn't wasn't. Think it was good. A I, good the movie. Only, but my biggest issue with this movie, it, it isn't the actors. One of the things I will say this: what I like about the movie is Brian Cranston and James Franco. Sure. What I what I like is that James Franco is never really playing a bad guy in this. He yeah. is just playing a guy who he says fuck a lot. He pretty much he has no filter. He just says whatever the hell he wants. But there's no point in the movie where he's a bad guy. Like he is a guy who obviously does love this girl and were you waiting for the other shoe to drop though no like, no as I, I wasn't James, but I, I was like is there gonna be a, a dark side to this you know oh <laughs> and, yeah, there was one part where i thought it might go somewhere like that and that was when keegan michael key was weirdly leering around the corner <laughs> at dinner at one point i'm like okay are we gonna have some weird plot twist where one of them's a villain honestly that there, there are no villains in this was that, and I, I i did enjoy that about the movie was that Cato? Yes. Yeah. What was the name of the movie? Oh, Gustav. Gustav. Gustav yeah. That yeah. guy was great. In fact, I would say that that character Keegan Michael Key's took fun. it a step above a lot of those movies because <clears throat> it was just so well done. Uh huh. I mean, he played that character to the hilt, man. It was mm -hmm. great. But um, you know, I mean, it's. I mean, you don't have to be Ridley Scott to do a movie like this. You can. You, I mean, you, <laughs> well, as it's, long it's as hilarious you, as that as, would be. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, he got close once, but um, I, when I would <laughs> say it, <laughs> say it. <laughs> no, man. I, I mean, I, I, it was, it was, it was silly. You know, it was silly. It was, it was not. I mean, I, there was a time like I would walk through the mall and, mm -hmm. or walk through the movie theater, and I'd see a stand up for like dodgeball. Yeah, and I'd be like, "You gotta be kidding me!" I like. Am dodgeball. I really gonna see? But I was just, I was like that at the time. Yeah. I was just like, too, too caught up in my own stuff uh -huh. and not taking i mean I, I i gotta treat it like music now mm -hmm. like I, I never begrudge anybody their music even if i don't like it like yeah i'm like i hate that but i don't belittle it in front of them because yeah that's the kind of thing that'll you know mm -hmm. come to blows a lot of times i mean yeah. I, I would mm -hmm. somebody talking up my music and being shitty at it i'd <laughs> knock the crap out of them if i had to i'm a little sophomore sometimes <laughs> goes with the territory no, for me this was the kind of movie that if it was midnight or later and I was a little baked and I was cruising through Netflix and it was on Netflix I would have no problem sitting there watching it and I'd probably have a fine time watching it I, I, I can't suggest well spending money and going to the theater to see yeah it. yeah I can't suggest that that's a date it's a date means. movie I That's yeah I mean, well I I can't well, imagine the dates I've ever been on <laughs> I I can't imagine a scenario where I would be e even high I I can't imagine I'd be sitting around watching this I'd, I'd probably just go to sleep like you have a different goes to sleep you have a different filter you have a different kind of like divining rod for the for what you like in a film this not necessarily but I, but uh, I, but I I don't think that like films like this um they don't really jump up into your like you it would did, never rate one of these kinds of films oh, a best film of of a year by any no, stretch no. of imagination. Well, I mean, like, but you have to. I, I, I would. Well, I mean, I would rate 
I would rate them in terms of like you know if if it's one of the best comedies of the year. Some of my favorite comedies are actually gross out movies like this. Sure. The, the the movie Screwballs from '85. By the way, I love Dodgeball. I do too. You can dodge I, I do wrench. love Dodgeball. Dodgeball's great. You yeah. can um, dodge a ball. I, I, I yeah, I do. Uh, I do love Dodgeball. There there are a lot of gr gross out comedies that I like. My the problem I had with this one, <laughs> great one, I did, Bridesmaids. I didn't see. As soon as the girls um, figured out that they should do a guys movie, like, yeah, like let's just be raunchy, mm -hmm. like the guys. Then maybe it'll maybe we can you know try something new here, and it totally worked because <laughs> everyone liked it. Girls liked it because it was pretty mm -hmm. empowering, and guys liked it because it was fucking stupidly fun. For the most part, I enjoy James. <laughs> For the most part, I enjoy James Franco movies. I like Seth Rogen movies. I I like a lot of the movies that they do. Uh, it, it, as far as the more raunchier stuff, uh, last year I really enjoyed Trainwreck. This one. Oh, Trainwreck was great. Yeah, I love that one. This one was a movie that I wish didn't stop every now and then to just be a gross out movie because it was so random and it stayed around for so long like that scene on the toilet goes on a long time it's it's you might think martin breast directed this movie <laughs> and, and and i'm not talking about a midnight run style of film but what Julie? was the one what was the one he did after that where it was brad pitt mr uh where it's just long shot after uh, long shot after you know st camera state and it was it was a very pretentious kind of oh. film for a guy who's no should know better but uh -huh. he got he got kind of carte blanche on it so he did the mm -hmm. movie he wanted to and I think Meet Joe Black is what it is yeah that's, yeah that's it that's and, it. and uh, Meet Joe Black's a good movie um, but it, it does it'll it, like film goers today are much different kids I think under twenty mm -hmm. if you play I mean for the most part. Um, just of the general populace, mm -hmm. um, they don't care about that stuff. They're like, they, right. they, they don't care about who, Steve McQueen. Who's that? Do you know what I mean? And when I hear that, I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh -huh. I want to kill you. But someone goes, they, oh, that guy who directed 12 years of slave. They don't see any of that. I mean, they, yeah. they're, they're just, I always say, and I used to get really mad at it, but I'm, I finally got to the point where I was like, listen, the good ones, mm -hmm. the, you know, people with a discerning eye are going to rise above that shit and discover their stuff on their own. So mm -hmm. yeah. why? Try to turn them on when or, they're being resistant, you know. <laughs> they'll be like, because there, are, unless there's like auto editing, sure. I can't sit there and watch it. I'll fall asleep because it's so boring to watch a tracking <laughs> no. shot that lasts more than ten seconds. Of you know, of comedy of the sophomore comedies like this, there are y there are better ones. Well, no, there Easily. were there were also much worse ones this year. Oh, there was yeah. Fifty Shades of Black, and there was a, a Medea Halloween, and things like that. Oh, I God. mean, this movie, I. The, the chuckles that I got out of this movie would be like what Brian Cranston was reacting to, or maybe some of the looks James Franco had. It was great chemistry been, between those two. It would have been stuff in the dialogue. The movie had just the, the too actual much like, gags the, they set up weren't by any means better than just the interactions between the actors. I think was the actual funny and it, stuff, and which is what this movie at its heart really should have been to, to make it at least funnier to me yeah. but as it was with every five minutes with uh a semen joke or <laughs> the nuts on the kid's face it it felt like the kind of thing where they had us they had a script and then someone came in and then just marked it with crayon to that's write right. that's right give to it, write like a bunch of urine and shit jokes give it to it. Uh, give it to the um uh, the whatever what's the what's the show the, there's all these tv show the cartoon shows like um the, the foul ones, uh -huh. you know, like I, I want to say, I keep say, wanting to say Major Dad. Duh. I'm not <laughs> talking about Dad. Gerald McCraney, uh -huh. but um, some of those writers, you know, uh -huh. are, are always into that stuff. They're always like, hey, yeah, I'll write a crap joke, a fart joke, what mm -hmm. semen jokes, bukkake? Are you kidding me? I'm like, is that really in a movie? In one of these yeah, screwball comedies? I'm like, that's just kind of ill. That's another yeah. thing. It's a, like this is the kind of movie where two characters will be having might be saying something funny and then the movie just stops dead for five minutes to have a conversation about about what Bukaki is well three like, minutes <laughs> yeah. it seemed like five minutes oh i was like timing minutes. it it was 20 minutes oh my god well and that it was, was half of this it was still one of those jokes that would have right. been it, the, the setup for it would have been a fine throwaway joke on its own. It really wouldn't have been that bad of a... It was right. like, oh, you get a little giggle. But having to come back to that and yeah, bring that it up again, it was just like, well, that's not necessary. That's not the one you want to circle back yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. And this movie did that a lot. It circles back to the worst jokes in the movie, whether it's 
the toilet joke, the moose urine, and I, I, I don't know. Like a lot of that stuff wasn't. It wasn't working for me in this because it was. It was for me. It felt like it was just there to be. Well, gross and that's and that's it it almost like, seemed like it was a script that was like okay let's take this movie that that made money at the box office and let's kind of take all the major points out of this that work for us okay it's the dad daughter relationship it's yeah. this it's that and they basically just make carbon copies of these things it's no, like yeah it, i i don't know that you know like a screenwriter like that you know i'm like i'm I was, we were talking about before the show and i was yeah. like well you know at least he got paid oh you sure know, yeah sure. but uh-huh. you know he probably didn't get paid very much and probably not as much as people think he got paid mm-hmm. yeah that's just the way it is well, right? one of the writers on but it's it was... just it's a carbon copy of you know no it, this movie it's not a feels... challenging script to write no i mean th- this movie feels like it was made because last year at christmas daddy's home did really well yeah. that's yeah. kind of what this well feels studio like studios me. need to have that kind of you uh-huh. know they need to have that variety so you know it's it's there's not just action movies or whatever to see you have to have an alternative right well, it's better than Collateral Beauty. <laughs> well, and the horrible thing is, is the way the studios do it is they they do it almost like comics publishers, where yeah. they they get a list of the films they want to get in production, mm-hmm. and they basically just set deadlines for all of them, so yeah. they can release them on these dates that make sense to this pie chart and this yeah. pie graph and this audience, this test audience. It's like so ridiculous because everything right now is it's it's about box office. It's about mm-hmm. bo- opening weekend, and it's the dumbest model ever created well I mean, it's, it's I, the I think dumbest I've, thing ever i've brought it up before too i honestly feel like the past couple years it seems like every year more and more movies come out every year lord yeah and it's i, I remember like you know when the matrix came out that was the main movie playing for like six months yeah matrix was one of those like six cents around mm-hmm. the same time that just kind of transcended everything you know and reminded you of a movie like when star wars came out in 77 yeah and in 1978, you look up at the movie marquee and it says, Star yeah. Wars held over for a 67th week. And you're like, yeah. it's been playing for over a year. That and you're going to yeah. see that earlier and earlier in the year, too. Especially how you have months like January and February that are kind of, yeah, they'll put whatever out. But meanwhile, this year in February, like you have Deadpool, which does gangbusters. You'll, see, you'll start seeing more and more of that earlier and earlier and it's honestly it's, it's because it feels they, like it's also why a lot of big summer blockbusters more of them bomb now more so than more so than you would kind of well, see everyone's the hedging their bets on on big budget you know six figure movies yeah I mean, marvel made the model for that and, yeah and it's like how do you compete with that i mean you mm-hmm. can't i mean if you lose you lose big you know, yeah. if you win, you win big. But if you lose, you lose your ass. When it's, something, it's like if Cleopatra wouldn't have made any money, and the studio yeah. just would have went, Bruh. yeah, it, yeah, and like with Cleopatra, how it it's simultaneously on the list of the biggest bombs, yet also on the same list of the top money makers of that save, year. Save, yeah, exactly. It was well as the filming, right? There were all these delays. Mm-hmm. It was almost like Apocalypse Now. Yeah, you know, yeah. the, 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 movie st- just the things forever. going on behind that film while it was in production you it was have, just hitting variety a lot. You have movies like Batman v Superman that have to reach a billion dollars in order to and, consider and itself. And that movie's like Success. one of the, yeah. one of the highest grossing movies of all time. But still, not that much of a success compared to what it probably should have made. Right. Compared to what they wanted, I'm yeah. never. I, I never take box office seriously. It's 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 bullshit, is what it is. Well, and it's, it's tickets sold. You know, if you you want to rate it, like Ben Hur probably sold more tickets than Titanic. Oh yeah, yeah easily. Uh, I think Gone with Titanic the Wind was is the still... biggest grossing movie of yeah. all time. Yeah. Are they? Or did they get Avatar. Unseated? Avatar. Okay, so it got unseated. Or, but wait, um, I think. I think Force Awakens might have gone even past that. Oh, yeah? I think, maybe. It's I just, I haven't looked ticket, at an adjusted prices, box man. office list in a while. I mean, they were yeah. paying $2 for a ticket. A dollar, yeah. dollar seven, dollar twenty-five when I was a kid. So, 75 cents uh-huh. in, in the early 60s. Yeah. So, I mean. But the other that, thing is that, that that movie probably played for. Well, it had to. Three or four yeah. months, you know? And it how else are they going to see it? it they have to, go out, in some places. they yeah. have to go out to the theater to see it or else they don't but see it. But I think it. that's the telling thing, though. It's, I, it's it's just like what we were talking about, electoral votes and all this stuff with the with the, with the the election. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's as simple as this. You vote, you count the votes, and the one with the most votes wins. That's how crazy about that? talk. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. No, I really? agree, because I think in terms of uh, ticket sales, I think Gone with the Wind is still number Gone one. Gone with the Wind would probably, yes, have to be mm-hmm. number one. Definitely. I think it Even is. Even today. And this, this couldn't have had a big budget to it. This will no. have... I'd say 30. I Yeah. Only the, because James Franco and Brian and they, Cranston they, they, they got spent, a budget. They spent a lot of money on set design. You could do that movie for yeah. for four. 
for four million bucks. Oh, you, you, could, you could do that. David Dakota could do this movie in a week. Oh, well, like, sure. I mean, you, like I, the, David Dakota has a big house that he uses in all of his movies. Yeah. So that's really what the most he said sh- in this movie was was a big house. We should be talking about a remake of People Under the Stairs. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's bring Everett McGill out of retirement. Well, and that's and that's something worthy of remaking. Find stuff that's kind of middle of the road. Uh-huh. I, I, we're getting way off topic here. No, 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 we do that's, all that's the time. We but it's <laughs> it, you know it's like you can't. I don't know. It's just it, it gets to be the same old thing. Mm-hmm. Did you go see Don't Breathe? No. That was it. You like people under the stairs? That was uh, Stephen Lang as a blind guy. I love ter- Stephen Lang terrorizing people in a house. I mean, I'll watch really Band of the Hand good. because Stephen. Lang. Oh fuck yeah! I mean, that's why I watched that Terra Nova show for the first few episodes. Directed by Paul Michael Glazer. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Band of the Hand? Yeah, Paul Michael Glazer. I think he's still a director. I think he's still no, he working. Is. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's a. You know, you get a guy that's worked on it. You got a lot of those people running around right now. Mm-hmm. Former actors and stuff like that. I think my favorite director right now amongst that kind of crew uh-huh. um, and mostly these guys are coming out of cable like Sopranos directed <laughs> Rome did these kinds of things is Timothy Van Patten I, I, of all yeah. people I He's knew that's what you were going to say some amazing work mm-hmm. and, and I really think he should graduate he should be able to graduate to, to feature films because he's shown he can do Good, the job yeah. mm-hmm. and I think he he's really more about I mean every episode that I've seen of these shows that he's directed yeah. are like a step above the other ones for, uh-huh. and it's not just they gave him the best episode he pays exactly. attention to the little things like let's tweak the script right here let's yeah. you know let's do these things to give this movie this could have a little TLC if we do the right things we can make this special yeah and that's how he thinks and I love that that's that's refreshing the it's, first I ever heard of him was remember the master yeah with Lee Van Cleef yeah yeah and oh, him shit. I, yeah. St- I still have I still have the tapes of that with, at home wait, wait what was his salami yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't. Was that Tim Van Patten? He was. Sal- yeah, it's Tim Van Patten with Salami in the White Shadow, right? Oh, in the White Shadow. Yeah, so I think a, so. There's the correlation for that. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta have an old timer like me sitting in the front seat to 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 go back to the White Shadow. <laughs> I saw that when they showed it on when they used to show that on Nick at Night. But that you but you brought up the master. I mean, <laughs> right, I just want to kiss you on the head. Right? <laughs> I remember when Lee Van Cleef passed away, I cut out his obituary. It's still hanging mm-hmm. in my closet at my parents' house. <laughs> I've got... Uh, so, I love Lee. I've got every 80s series where Lazenby came back to play James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> that, Return from Man, Return of the Man from Uncle. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Funnily enough, I was at a, one of those Darabont dinners, the annual mm-hmm. Frank Darabont dinners at Comic-Con. And we'd been doing it in the same place for a long time. So we knew all the servers. Mm-hmm. And... This one gal who's just always really nice to us and took really good care of us, she, she comes over to me and she says, she, of course she came over to me because I'm the most gregarious guy sitting there. So she knows <laughs> she can approach me. And, and I'm like, uh, she says, what's the James Bond movie that, that isn't Sean Connery or Roger Moore? And I went, and this is kind of right before Daniel Craig. Yeah. It's a little, no, I don't think it's that long ago. But anyway, she says, I think, I, I said, George Lazenby? And she goes, I think he's sitting right over there. No shit. She goes, would you come over and like take a picture of me and him holy shit and i said sure i'd love to so i got up and i went over there with her and she said excuse me are you mr lazenby and she's like yeah she goes do you mind if my husband takes a picture <laughs> Which is he is so good. one of my favorite actors like yeah. this is rare that it's not one of the midnight screenings where i'm wearing a lazenby shirt <laughs> well you know what really shocked me about that moment was i was also star struck yeah and he just looked like a fucking movie star. Oh yeah. He he just his hair was like silver, uh-huh. just perfectly coiffed. He had kind of a tan, not like George Harris uh, mm. Hamilton, but but he had a bit of a tan. Yeah. And uh and he just just looked like I'm like, why isn't this guy doing movies now? Because yeah. He's he just has a great kind of nobility mm-hmm. in his in his face and uh, I don't know, man. I I believe he's a model and a yeah, all kinds of stuff. His kung fu movies from the '70s are some of my favorites. Stoner, <laughs> Man from Hong Kong. Oh, Stoner, so man, that's what's great be, about being 13 years old. <laughs> you can watch stuff like that, yeah. and it's infinitely entertaining, man. <laughs> it's beautiful. And then because you infinitely loved it as a child, uh-huh. you hold you on can to be it. 40 yeah. years old and still love it. I love oh it. yeah, it's great. And still have my Lazenby collection. I still have uh, my action figures too. He my, knew how to spell Lazenby when he was five. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy name to spell because it's like hard to pronounce as well. It's hard, to, it's hard, it's hard to talk. It's hard to talk Lazy a tattoo boy? artist into getting a reason be tattooed on a five-year-old's back. <laughs> can I get that? Can I get? Can I get that in Gaelic letters, please? Like I thought, a, I thought he went like, like a, a newspaper the gothic. font. Yeah. Well, any final thoughts about 
this before I have to go see Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. I kind of wish I was going to that with you because I, I I wouldn't mind seeing Michael Fassbender in another Centurion. It seems like that's what it is. I mean, in a way. My, it, yeah. Assassin's, the, honestly, I don't know that. Oh. Maybe it should I, have Neil Marshall. Neil's I don't know. Neil's awesome. He's a great dude. And, um, I don't know much about the video game, honestly. I'm kind of walking into this one blind. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I don't know much about the video game either, other than the yeah. fact that when I first saw those games, I uh, I really gravitated towards mm -hmm. it because I love historical stuff and period mm -hmm. stuff <clears throat> in what I do with comics mm -hmm. and, and with covers and stuff. I love, love the subject matter. And, yeah. and you, can, you can really be as, you know, treat that stuff as kind of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, soberly. Yeah. That's, not, that's not the word I'm looking for, but it'll it'll do. Uh, um, you know, something that's watered down. Yeah. yeah. And versus something that's got a lot of you know mm -hmm. balls to it. So <laughs> moose balls. Moose balls. Moose would you guys? Balls. You guys would probably call it. What would you call this? A, a rental? I'd, I'd call it. I, I would, or, absolutely. I'd call it a Netflix. Watch Wait for Netflix. Or something like that. And you'll um, have a ball. Uh, or take your girlfriend to it. And, and, and if, if you're 18, 19, 20, you know, between sure. the. Yeah. You, you know, that's a, that's a good date. It's maybe. one of those movies that it's exactly what the trailers and everything make it out to be. If like, you're if sold you've seen on the, the tra trailers, you'll like the movie. I mean. Well, I thought the. Tra you know, and maybe even the trailer is funnier than the movie as a whole. But it, it's. It's. It's, fi I, it's fine. Who was the gal that played the daughter? I'm not sure. Oh, I kept she sitting there familiar. like, she, she looks really like good. Isla Fisher, but I know it's not her because she's not 21 years old. Yeah, I liked her a lot because she, she, even though she, she had to play the woman at times and be a bit of a bitch. Uh huh. Um, but at the end, she, she stood didn't up come for off herself. That way. She too, didn't come yeah. off that way. She came off really strong and independent and beautiful and you know. That and was, by the that end, was I was like, yeah, I, I get why this relationship happened. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah okay, like it, this isn't unbelievable for well, me. Well, there's that sub story too of he runs a printing business, yeah. in an age of the digital age, you know, uh -huh. and and so that's, I mean, th uh, that's kind of saying something underneath that. I think, uh -huh. you know, it's like, what are we going to do with comics at some point? What are we going to do with it when we thought they were going to go digital totally? Mm -hmm. You know. Or, you know, whatever that is. Print media of any kind. The gag where the paper was their food was kind of... <laughs> like, that, that was one... That was a good... That was a, a good sight gag I got laughed at. Like, I, I, it looked so horrible, you know? Like, <laughs> like if you've ever eaten at a five-star restaurant or you watch, you know, right. like, like any of those cooking shows yeah. where it's presentation and all mm. that stuff... That's what it was, but mm. to the most crazy degree you can think of. Let's have you know, like bear, be bear you a know, smoked bear, smoked bear, yeah. <laughs> smoked grizz. This is a Cody. They're cutting up myself. with that he was using sciz using scissors to cut their paper food. But my favorite one was the sea urchin. It's like, how do you eat it? It's a sea urchin, like with a salad mm. in it. So, you, but you're supposed to like, are you supposed to pick it up and eat it, or, or I mean, impale yourself, or you edible scoop it out? Was, I mean, was, was yeah. one of them edible it was just dirt. silly stuff it was but it was kind of funny that yeah. was a good, I get a good chuckle out of those i th this movie i it got a chuckle out of me here and there even though overall i i can't say i was a huge fan of this movie it's but like, i will say that I'm not if, saying i was a huge fan either if I'm you just, put it if you put this movie on if you put this on netflix and you're sold on it within the first few minutes You'll enjoy it. Like it, it, it's not like it's a movie that radically changes tone. It's or innocuous, anything. you know. It's innocuous, and if you want to feel good, I mean, if you, if you're like you just want to go see a movie that's not gonna, you don't want to. People sometimes just don't want too much, which is why we have a lot of cheeseburger out there. Yeah, oh, but yeah, which is why they make movies like this, mm -hmm. and that's fine. There's a place for a cheeseburger, but not oh, every meal. Do you know what I mean? This, so that's yeah, what you're like about. Th I mean this. I mean, look. This this would be the better choice than seeing something like Collateral Beauty or <laughs> well, uh, or and then what you were saying like last that. year about Daddy. Oh, Daddy's Home. Daddy's yeah, home. yeah. This, I'd much I, rather see a film like this than something a little more lowbrow, but, but uh -huh. more adult themed. You know, than see a a silly Kindergarten Cop style movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know we got I mean? Kindergarten Cop two on video now. We can watch Is that Richard instead. Tyson in it? I hope to God they they bring was, back Mr. Chris. I was talking about I was talking to Phil Jano, and I said. It would be so great if you if you did a sequel to Twelve O'clock High or Three O'clock Three. High. Three. I was thinking of that movie with the, that fist fight trailer yeah. with the, the Charlie Day and yes. uh, Ice Cube. I'm like, I almost leaned over and said to you, like, this is Three O'clock High or something. Which I guarantee you is going to be a far better movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Three O'clock High is a genius film. Mm -hmm. Um.
I'd love to see a, like a sequel to that because Casey's around mm -hmm. and Richard Tyson hangs around the the old or the new Beverly Theater nice. a lot, and he he does Q and A's down there. And, yeah. I mean, I mean, everybody's standing around. I mean, they're all here. Let's get them. Let's get them together. Let's Richard Tyson's fucking great. Yeah, like his oh. manager's an asshole. Oh, <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> I gotta go see Burn Assassin's Creed because. God forbid I miss Assassin's oh, Creed. Oh, I know. That's not a bridge burnt. He's, yeah. a, he's an agent. Oh, he ain't going to do anything for me. I'm my own agent. <laughs> he, he can't do anything I can't do. <laughs> <laughs>